we tried so hard to find axles and electric motors and gear driven sets manufactured in North America. We could not find a single one. In fact, we reached out to a company and we said, hey, we're building an electric logging truck. You make axles for logging trucks and you make electric axles. Can we get an electric axle for our logging truck? They said, oh, we love what you're doing. They asked us to promote them on social media. I've since deleted it because when I said, hey, it's time for me to buy that axle. Can you send me an invoice so I can buy it? They said, no, you're not an existing OEM and we will not sell axles to anybody that wants to do retrofit kits. We only want to sell them to new large OEMs. Didn't matter if I had the money. Didn't matter if I could get it. And they said, even if we could sell it to you, it would be up to three years away before we'd sell it. And that's after they asked us to promote it. So I searched all over and I could not find a single axle made in North America that I could buy. Like, turns out everything was made in China. Even the, I believe even the country we were gonna go source from has all their components made in China. They just do the final assembly here. Like, you try and find an axle made in North America, you can't. You try and find an electric motor made in North America, you can't. Everyone just brings them in from China. Like, you're talking about like a Sisu axle is Design engineered Finland, you, but you look at all the other axles. At the end of the day, electric motors, like you get that electric motor out of a lot of mobile electric equipment or stationary equipment. You just can't find them built here. So we literally went, had these axles custom specced out. They were custom built for us, for Edison. And yeah, that is what we ended up with. I, because of China, I do know the worries there, but everything is made in China nowadays, as it turns out. We just made sure to fly over and personally do the inspection. Inspect where they're made. Make sure they were tested before shipped. Make sure that we were happy and make sure that we could secure the supply chain. We do have our entire supply chain now secured. If we need spare parts, we can order the part, have it air freighted over. We are going to carry excess parts, but the entire thing is all now mass produced where we can get any component we need. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. This is the one part that is the Edison part on this Edison truck because <laughs> it's funny. I think they thought they were going to shut us down. Like, I don't think they were happy with us trying to build a truck with no planned obsolescence, right to repair, common parts. I th And they basically thought that if no of the large electric axle manufacturers in North America would sell it to us. I thought if they didn't, I think they thought that if they didn't sell us any, we would just go away. We didn't. We reached out to people and got enough people working who were incredibly, incredibly brilliant mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. They pick the most reliable components, set them together, and this is now the axle that we have. So yeah, they told us to go away. You can't order them. Well, guess what? We are now competing with you as a supplier of axles. So you didn't have us go away. Instead of us being a customer, we became competition. So you still have your normal differential that you can source normal ring and gear, ring and pinion style gearing. They're 4.0 uh, rear ends. Then they go to this set of planetary rear ends, which is planetary, built for heavy haul, heavy spec. It's got one gear and a sun gear, a bunch of other little gears in there. This rear end is also a lot heavier spec than your standard rear end that you would see in a highway truck. Thicker sidewall, thicker casing, thicker pumpkin on the back end. The electric motor. We have 250 kilowatts of power on the front end here, which is about 340 horsepower per axle. So if you have three axles together on a tri-drive, you're looking at a little over a thousand horsepower. On a tandem truck, you're putting out about 700 horsepower to the wheels. There's really no gears, there's no drive line. So you're gonna get a lot of increased reliability with these things. No input shafts, no output shafts. Essentially running this, both of these motors are in sync, moving at the exact same speed 
It's like running your inner axle all the time, 100% of the time. On the top here, if we go through, through some of the parts, why don't you come in here and I'll show you some parts. Right here, these are your high voltage lines. Your three lines come in, power in here. On the top, these are your coolant lines. This is what's going to keep this axle assembly cool. It runs these coolant lines through the electric motors and everything just to kind of take that heat, move it away. As we know, that was one of the issues we had with Carl was uh, uh, heating issues when you're trying to pull heavy loads. The truck uses a lot more power than a passenger car. Uh, we just got our oil pumps. It's going to keep out all your oil circulating. So on the back end here, a lot of you may not be super familiar with planetaries, but these are spec for like heavy haul off-road applications. What they do is they give you a three times reduction at the hub. So it uh, basically it lowers the amount of torque at the hub and it's great for low speed travel. Say if you're loaded like 200,000 pounds, 300,000 pounds on a logging road up steep grades and you're moving at low speed, this is gonna give you those crawling gears. Now, they will overheat for highway if you're going to be running them at 120, 130 kilometers an hour all day. Keep in mind, these E-axles do have, with a set of 24 fives on them, they do have a top speed of about 135, 140 kilometers an hour that they'll cruise at. At 140 all day long, you may heat up these planetaries, but once again, we are specking this truck to be a more of an off-highway logger right now. All you would have to do really is remove the planetaries, put on a normal set of hubs, and you have more of a highway tractor. We could do that in the future, but let's make this truck as absolutely as skookum as we possibly can. Yes, they add weight. No, I don't care. This truck is an off-highway logger. <laughs> um, so for axle syncing, that is one of the questions we've been asked a lot is how do they sync? Now, there's actually sensors in the electric motor that will detect the smallest variation in speed differentials between this like you don't really need wheel speed sensors the electric motor will tell you exactly what rpm each electric motor is spinning and it will adjust that automatically to make sure these motors are perfectly in sync it just that is straight up because you don't have any inner axles and you know the cool thing is because of no inner axles because of no drive shaft if you wanted to, we could throw these on a trailer. And that is one of the projects I want to work on in the future is have a powered trailer. Imagine you're low bedding in the bush. You're in the muck, the mud, or on a steep grade, you could have your trailer pushing you. You're going downhill, you can have your trailer holding back. Like for off highway applications, having an extra 700 to 1000 horsepower on your trailer with that 700 to 1000 horsepower on the truck, like in theory, with a seven axle truck, you could have 2000 horsepower on a seven axle truck with pushing and pulling. So you're not stuck in the mud. Although there's an interesting that ha thing that happened and I'll be honest with you, it was unforeseen. Uh, we were talking with some foresters and a local mill and we were talking about how, well, you're coming downhill in the winter time or pulling steep adverses you're going to have an easier time pulling adverses. You're going to be able to have better holdback coming downhill. And the very first thing they said to us is, oh, so we can get into steeper blocks. <laughs> oh, well, we could put a steeper adverse in the block. We could come out a little bit steeper grades. And I'm like, oh, I designed this. I'm like, oh, well, this is going to make the truck driver's life a lot easier. And all the mill thought is, oh, well, now I can get way into timber that I couldn't get to before. Or, oh, we only had an option to heli log that block because it was so steep, but if you can give us that power, we can get into a block that we were heli logging before. So all they're going to be asking the drivers to do is go into steeper shit. So my bad, guys. Our apologies. Yeah, that's, uh, turns out I thought we were going to make life easier. They came back with, oh, now we can go into things. And now we used to be break up. It was a bitch to get your truck and trailer through the mud and you get stuck in the mud and couldn't make it. Now with your trailer pushing you, you're probably going to be able to go through more breakup, which means that that little spring fall vacation that we always loved is going to be shorter. Sorry. So on this first truck, they actually ended up sending us drums. The future trucks will be disc brakes, but we got what we got on this one. There's a, there was a lot of engineering that went into these axles, and that's one of those things that Ah, it is what it is. It'll work. 
Honestly, with the amount of regenerative power these things have, you should never have to touch your brakes anyway, so.